So now we're back at it for 14 more days, 13 after this. We do have 15 days of school left this semester, and that's why I say 14 of those days is, is when you're in here, because on the 19th and 20th, you are not in here on the 20th, because if I remember right, the order of March goes, is it first, second, fourth, and seventh, I believe, on the 19th, then the 20th would be third, sixth, fourth, then eighth. Yes, I'm pretty sure that's how that works, okay? But regardless of how uh, we, we uh, view that, we're, we're winding down very quickly. We've heard that before, just on account of the, the nice things that are, were happening here with uh, your, your state tournament run and then come back for, for two days. We say that we are, are winding down very quickly. So uh, this is something that I just jotted down, okay, from here on down. This is still, uh, I want to leave that up on the board for um, the sophomores. But one of the things that we want to look at is notice that we will take this in a progression with uh, naming these compounds. So these might be a little unfamiliar, but if we start with familiar territory, okay? So a lot of times when we do these, I, for some reason, I've just always used more often than not three carbon compounds. So uh, we can see that the, the rules, some for the most part don't change. Here, I guess this is, these aren't three carbon compounds, but as we move forward, so if this is familiar territory, which it probably is, okay, anyone can name that, okay, of course it's propane, then how would we change this to that? Okay, so then it's going to be propene, and then we need to do that, then we got to say left or right, okay, then we got to do that, and then maybe that. Now, now we've got our, our propene, okay? And when it came to reactions of those, gazuntite, which one is more stable, the alkane or the alkene? The alkane is really, really stable. This is a really unstable bond here. The only exception to that always say there's exceptions to the rule, like helium being a noble gas in column eight, that's an exception, of course. Hydrogen being in column one, it's got metallic light characteristics because it only has one valence electron, so the exception to the rule then would be this, okay, where you have, oh, I did that wrong. Mm -hmm where you have these on the inside, and then we don't have to go any further. We don't write it like that, though. We do this instead, okay? So this also has double bonds, just like that, but this is very stable, just like that of the alkanes, the benzene ring. Okay, then as we move forward, we had propane, now we got propene. So now when it comes to these alcohols, other than naming them, the only thing that we have done is, per se, uh, or I should say, let me start over. Besides naming them, that's an important aspect, but what's more possibly just as important as naming it? We spent a lot of time on that. Well, I, I, I'd say a lot of time. Wait. No, not a, did you say triangle? Oh, draw. Oh, draw. <laughs> Not try. And it has something to do with what we see down here. Like this here. Oh, yeah, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Okay, so this oxygen is not attached to that one. It's actually attached to this one. So when we look at that, what type of alcohol would that be? Yeah, it's secondary. And moving forward, um, don't ever think that, oh gosh, 
I still got to do that. What's wrong with doing that? I, I would like to say nothing because I don't think there's anything wrong with that because that's just good practice. I, I, practices, I would think. Okay, so we have this secondary alcohol now. So now we're going to name it. And would something like that exist? I, I don't know. Uh, one of the things, reasons that we'd like to approach this, we, we, we want to challenge your mind, challenge your brain, and, and make you um, think about a lot of these things. Because if it's difficult now, um, it, it might not be that bad when you see this the next time. Okay. So hopefully that good work ethic that we're establishing here will carry over. So just like what we would have done with all of these, okay, in other words, what is the, the first thing that you do in naming all these compounds? Because those rules don't change. You've got to find the longest chain. So same thing would apply for these as well. So in this case, what is your longest continuous chain, even though it is bent and branched and, okay? Okay, so that is correct. So now our six carbon chain, our prefix is what? Okay, so we can do this and how do we denote that being an alcohol family now? Okay. So we don't just have plain hexanol, because that would just be a, a straight chain with uh, the OH being on the end. But that's not the case. What carbon number is it on? Okay. And, and, and that would be right, because you're going one, two, three, four, five, six. It's not going to go this way because then it will be on number four. Okay. The only thing that I could foresee being not necessarily a problem, but I think everyone would agree, whether it's here or the next step that you take, this would be an appropriate name for that. The only thing that I can see possibly being different, and this is going to throw, a, it's not going to throw you off the track or anything like that, the only thing I can think that could possibly be different would be that, okay? That's true, but yeah, then you would do that if you had that. But for our purposes, this is saying I, I, this could happen when you take in college. I, I don't think so because I think this is still more appropriate and, and this is what we're going to go by. So what we're asking here, what that question was, is for our purposes, when we did break this apart, okay, would mean if maybe we had something like, oh, we'll just put a methyl group down here, okay? So then on our second carbon, we would say 2-methyl, oops, then you would break this apart. Okay. So if there's another like derivative. Derivative, yep. Yep, that is correct. Because if there's nothing written after a number, then it's just telling you where that organic family is located. But if you have something other than that, whether it's a double bond or whether it is an alkyl derivative, or did we do this last week? We might have done this. Is maybe that's how we did it. Um, no, well, there is one that's like two five dimethyl three pentene dash one, but that's for a double bond. Okay, so then, for our purposes, I think either one of these would. Would, would be right because what we want to instill in you is that if there's nothing written after that number it's telling you either where that organic family is located or if there's a, uh, an alkyl derivative uh, branching off that as well or that double bond. That doesn't happen very often with what you had just said where 
there's a double bond. We, we'd maybe do that once or twice because that's pretty high, <laughs> high order thinking. Okay. For, okay. How do you know when to put like P or S in front of it, or do you not do that? Like this here. But this here? Yeah. No, you don't do that. We're just saying. Um, I oh, no, nope. nope. you don't need that. That's just saying that it's a primary alcohol. That's, that's all that that is saying. Yep. Okay. So then moving on with, with these two, okay. Then we'll get you on your way here pretty soon. So now we can get rid of these. Okay. So now, if we have an aldehyde, a lot of things, they, it doesn't change, okay? Just the suffix is gonna change. And I think we covered this a little bit last year in general chemistry, naming. Organic compounds, did we do aldehydes? Yeah. We did? Okay. So same thing applies. You only have two carbons, so that prefix is what? Oops. If it was an alkyl derivative, then yes. Okay. Then when it comes to aldehydes, it's very similar to alcohols. Okay, since it's an aldehyde, we just put that on there. So then it's ethyl, not OL, because then we'd have OH over here. So then it's ethyl. Okay. All Could we have just a one carbon aldehyde? Sure. Sure, you sure could. And if that was the case, now, what's different about this is notice when you get to higher numbers of aldehydes, okay, there's only one hydrogen on that carbon. When it comes to methanol, though, it's got two hydrogens because there's not another carbon to bond to like there is here, okay? So that is actually an organic family. It is methanol, okay? Then naming this ketone, same rules apply. Parent chain is how many? Four. Okay. Okay. If we put an E there, it's an alkane. If we put E and E, it's an alkene. If we put Y and E, it's an alkyne. If we put an OL here, then it's an alcohol. If we put an AL there, it's a what? It's an aldehyde. But in this case, this double bonded oxygen is not on the end. It's somewhere in the middle. So then we do that. Butanone, what we would call that. But that can that there's an exception to that rule too. Okay? Because how do we know that this is a ketone? Because it's not on the first one. That's exactly right. That double bond oxygen is not on the first one, but rather the so on the second one, so we can't call this butanone. May, you, you could possibly do that, but this would possibly be a little more familiar territory. With that secondary alcohol, how would we call that? This OH is on which carbon? 
second one. Yeah, so then for the same reason, we would call that either 2-butanol, or in this case, it's a ketone, so 2-butanone. But you can have, now we said there's a, oops, I missed a bond here. You can have an exception to the rule, okay? Notice we had said, the moment we do this, if we take a carbon off, that's no longer a ketone, is it? It's a what instead? It's an aldehyde. So our exception to the rule is in aliphatic compounds, you cannot have a double bond oxygen on the first carbon and be a ketone. But, just like we had said earlier, there is an exception to that rule. And that's what we see down here. Because, since these are ring structures, okay, go ahead and pick the left or the right one. Right one? Okay, so it's a ring structure with how many carbons in it? Well, I, yeah, we, we should say, well, count your dashes here because it's maybe not a very good. Really? I think, yeah, they're supposed to, uh, okay, I'm missing one there. Okay, yeah, so uh, because I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, these are supposed to be the same. I just didn't do a very good job of putting that in. I didn't catch that. But we did want an eight carbon ring structure. So, same thing applies. It's still eight carbons. So we can put that. And then what is our organic family with that? You're right, because this is one of them aspects where it's an exception to the rule where, yes, this is double bind oxygen, and it's on the first carbon, but it's not an aldehyde. It's actually a ketone. And there's a couple of ways we could establish that. If it's going to be an aldehyde, what else has to be on that carbon? There has to be a hydrogen, but there is none. So that's why this is an exception to the rule. This is carbon number one right here. Then we either got to go counterclockwise or clockwise for our derivatives then, which what do we see branching off of there? We see a methyl and an ethyl group, okay? So therefore, which one is going to give you a lower combination going this way or going that way, going clockwise? This way? Yes, because here we have a, one on the second one. If we went this way, it would already be on the third one. So therefore, this is two, and then this is way over on seven, because there's number eight. Then you have to alphabetize them. So now, which one comes first? Okay, so we have seven. I'm going to run out of space here. dash, two, dash, methyl, oops, what else would we have to put here? Because it's a ring structure. Octan, octanone, okay. So, and if I, I would think it would be also appropriate if you really wanted to, you could also do that. Dash one, dash cyclooctanone. Okay. And maybe that is the more appropriate way of doing that because you have these derivatives on there. For our purposes, we want to put that one in there. Okay. Then this one's pretty straightforward. What's the only difference between these two? Well, other than this one doesn't have derivatives. It's not a ketone. 
it's an alcohol. And then what type of alcohol would that be? It is a secondary alcohol. Okay, so then the difference between these, it's a ring structure. So notice this is going to um, copy over just a little bit. So ring structure. And then where is that OH group, the family, located on which carbon? Yeah. Since there's nothing else on there, and you're going to have two O's next to one another. Okay. And then it's just understood, since there's nothing else branching off of there, that this is going to be on that first carbon. Just like, notice we don't say... You don't say one <coughs> propene. You can, but it's just understood that it's after that first carbon. So same concept. Okay, then the last thing, any questions over what we have done? Maybe I've just brushed through these, but I know it's the first day back. Just want to have time to, okay, this is what we got to do, and we don't want to feel crunched for time either. So the last thing. Okay, so what would happen to some primary alcohols then at high temperatures? Well, let's look at a typical primary alcohol. So when we say high temperatures, we're mainly looking at this. And when it says lower temperatures, we're looking at that. Because it's going to be a difference on what's going to happen. So at higher temperatures, okay, these are both dehydration reactions. So then the dehydration reagent, we use a sulfuric acid. And therefore, what happens when something gets dehydrated? What are we removing? You're removing water. So, but at higher temperatures, okay, this goes through a different pathway. So, do we just have three carbons over here or six? It's only going to be three. Okay, so you're nodding your head yes, which is true because, so if we change this to 140 degrees, however, now you're going to have six because at lower temperatures, this doesn't form alkenes. It forms ethers instead. That's why we would say six. So that's what we're talking about when we're when we're looking at the temperature ranges. Okay, 180 degrees. This would just form an alkene, but 140 degrees it forms an ether. Okay, and what that would mean is you would have to say, all right. So if we're going to remove this. We'll probably take that one off of there, and then, so this is gone, and then that's gone. And how we talked about it last week, we said, just remove the boxes. And that's where, that's where, that's our H2O, and we did that. Okay, that was probably a lot of content in a short amount of time. Front row, all right, middle row, okay. So I will go grab your papers. Uh, the other ones you can get ready to hand in when I get back. And then notice, um, do you remember, yes. We don't know how to do the ring structure. Oh, okay. So when we look at those, there's two of them. Like different ones. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just a moment here. Okay. So there's a. Uh, uh, on the paper that has 12, 13, 14, and 15 on what you have here. I don't know how well that, that shows up. But when we look at this, was it uh, 13, 14, and 15, or just 14 and 15? Okay, so when you look at number 14, we know it's a ring structure, but what type of alcohol is that? It'd be the same type as this. This one's just a little bigger, that's all. Okay, so this is a secondary alcohol, just like what this one is. So then what you would do 
what are we reacting that with? Yeah, it's, it says K2Cr2O7. What type of, is that dehydration or is that oxidation? oxidation? That is oxidation. So then you would look at your chart and see, okay, what happens to secondary alcohols when they get oxidized? And that's correct, but what is that called, though? Not an aldehyde. Everything you said is accurate, but it's one of those where it's, we say it's an exception to the rule because it's going to form a ketone because there's no hydrogen, because 14 and 15 are going to kind of going to go hand in hand, and, and, and then this is why. Okay. So we see this here, okay? So we've got this secondary alcohol. So we have this uh, potassium dichromate, K2, I'm just going to abbreviate it like that. So we know what that is because there is an adjoining hydrogen here. This can be oxidized now. So when that happens, you, well, what's throwing us off, okay, is when we look at that, we're saying, wait a minute, that's the first carbon, so that can't be a ketone, that's got to be an aldehyde. But remember, ring structures are, again, that exception to the rule where that happens, okay? Then, with number 14, or excuse me, 15 then. That's all you do, 14. That's all you got to do? because you're showing oxidation there. And then number 15, correct, which why, why, did, why did we put a circle around here just no more than two minutes ago? Well, not so much that, but is that hydrogen here? No, that got stripped off of there. That's the only way a compound can be oxidized is if you strip that hydrogen off of there. Because there's nothing there. Well, it's not that there's nothing there. Because it's not a hydrogen. It's a carbon-to-carbon -carbon bond. Okay? So what, what we're saying in the front row here is we have this uh, uh, five-sided figure. Okay? To where, okay, sure enough, this would oxidize. That could do it. But that's not what the structure is. There Instead of this being a hydrogen atom, there's a methyl group here. So since there's no hydrogen here, this cannot oxidize. So therefore, you have a two-letter answer. No reaction. Because it's a tertiary alcohol. That's right. That is a primary alcohol, so number nine. Yes, because it's going to go through two stages. Okay, so we'll let you wrap them up. And uh, All right, so that's all we have for today. We'll catch up to you next time.